Hello, welcome to the same space. I'm Marion. We have received a few questions from our viewers and I decided to deal with some of those questions today. Interestingly, they kind of are all related to what we would call the winning mindset. So I'll jump right into it and take the questions one by one. So the first question is, please give us some information on a winning mindset and in what way it has influenced who you are today. I think the first thing really is to understand what a winning mindset is. And the best way I think I can explain it is the analogy with iron. Iron, as strong as it is, can only be destroyed by rust. And rust is really what happens to iron when it mixes with humidity in the environment, as simply as that. So in the same way, the only thing that can destroy the indomitable human spirit is its mindset. So when you think about it, the only limitation that any human being has on his or her accomplishments would be their thoughts, their mindset. And so what's your mindset? Your mindset is really the lens through which you view the world, the lens through which you view what we often say are reality. Any situation, any circumstances, you look at it using your eyes, but really you see with your mindset, okay? So if we're talking about a winning mindset, what makes a mindset a winning mindset? It's really a mindset that is aware of its thoughts, its beliefs, and makes sure that it's in the driving seat and those thoughts and underlying beliefs are not limiting it. So it's a mindset that is set to win. And how has that influenced who I am today? Uh, to explain that, I think I'll go back to when I was a child and I used to look at the children of very influential people, the ch children of very rich people, whether we were in school or just playing, there was a certain attitude they had because maybe their parents were, were influential. So for instance, if your, your father is the president or your father is the MD of a company, there was a certain attitude to it. And I deeply believed that I was a child of God. And so if children of humans who were powerful could have that sort of confidence, then imagine somebody whose father was God. And so for me, it meant that I had to be a pace setter. There was no limitation to what I could achieve if God were my father. And I deeply believed that God was my father. So all through my life, anything that anybody said to me can't be done, I just felt, well, it can be done because I have a father who can do anything. And so that put me through secondary school, university, and when I was in, in the School of Law in the University of Nigeria in Suka, I was told that the last first class we had was like 19 years before that, and nobody could get a first class. I was like, all right then, let's, let's just go, go at it. I will be the pace setter. I will do the best, be the best I could be. And of course, quite a long story short, I did make the first class. That also took me into law school. I was told that it was only people from a certain university that made first class. I'm like, all right then, let's go at it. And so in my mind, I believe there were no limitations. The sky was only a stepping stone. And the same thing when I went to Dundee and all the, I was on a Chevlin scholarship and I was told it was only masters that they sponsored and not PhD. And I said, okay, only a failure will be to trial. Let's go for it. And I did, and I got it. So every step of my life, I've always believed that there were no limitations on my life. Anything I put my mind to it, I could do it. And so the issue was, where am I putting my mind? Where is my dream? Where is my vision? And even when I went into Shell in London, and there were certain limitations that were being placed on me for whatever reason, I decided that that wasn't the place for me. Because if you stayed in a place that put limitations on you, after a while you would start believing it, and that would be a self-fulfilling prophecy. So I left Shell, and I went off to, to fulfill my vision. And even when I left Seplat, I had my vision, and I'm still fulfilling that vision today. So a winning mindset has brought me this far, to be honest with you. 
a belief that there was nothing in the world that it was impossible for me to do and that my values meant that anything I put my mind to, I would achieve it. So hopefully that's giving you an insight into how a winning mindset brought me thus far. Now, the second question is, looking back at your academic journey, what mindset contributed to your success? So I think the, first, the answer to the first question has really given some um, light to this. The winning mindset was really what was driving me up to the point where I am today. Okay, then I'll go into the next question. Wow, these are very interesting questions. Have you at any point had self-doubt or negative thoughts that discouraged you? A resounding yes. I don't know whether there's anybody on this earth that doesn't have negative thoughts. I call them automatic negative thoughts or self-doubt. And you know, it's actually, I would say, a natural thing. Uh, part of it is natural, part of it is nurture. Let me start with the nurture. When we're born as children, we are very curious. We ask a lot of questions. Unfortunately, a lot of us are shouted down when we ask questions as children. And it's still happening. Most of the people I meet and I ask them about their question frequency will tell me, oh, no, no, I was, I was told to stop asking questions or I was, the response was because I said so. And so when they were growing, they stopped asking questions. And indeed, alongside that is the fact that I think it's about 3,000 times that we hear no. You only hear yes about 30 out of those 3,000 times, something like that. And so we grow up with the feeling that we can't do things instead of that we can do things. So generally, as we grow up, when you want to do things, there's a, a lot of little niggling voices in your head saying, are you sure you need to do that? And sometimes you call that self-doubt or the gremlins. Then there's another aspect to it, which is the psycho-cybernetic mechanism. We usually call that PCM at the Unleash Academy, which is really what you could call the autopilot of the brain or the thermostat of the brain that is set where your beliefs and thoughts or whatever it is. And the PCM is there to protect you from danger. And so, something like when you walk onto a street and a car is coming to hit you and you jump right back, it's your PCM trying to protect you from that danger. But as it happens, when you're leaving your comfort zone, you're taking risk, or you're going to do something new, the PCM will also react as if you're getting into danger and will try to protect you. But when you are aware of that, then you recognize what it is and you can then turn around and say, okay, I know what you're doing, but I've got this. I'm actually going to do this, I've thought about it, I want to do it. So really, I think every living being has those negative thoughts, has self-doubt. But the question is, how do you handle it? Do you have a level of awareness to realize when that is happening to you? And that, I think, is the most important thing, to be aware that it doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you. It's your system trying to protect you from what it perceives as danger, which you now need to tell it, no, this is not danger, I'm going to do this. Or it could be yourself, the self-doubt that's been programmed into you, conditioned into you. And sometimes you can even name it. But the important thing is to realize that if you're going to be an achiever, if you're going to live a fulfilling life, you shouldn't let any of those things pull you back or hold you back. And I think it was, uh, what's this artist that said, if you're going to go and paint, and you hear a voice saying that, you, that you're not good at painting, by all means, please go ahead and paint. So even the best achievers you know, the Olympic gold winners, the artists, the writers, even the noble lords, if you speak to them, you will find out that they too have those negative thoughts. But you have to find a way to let your curiosity, your determination, your drive, your passion, help you get over those things and you don't let them keep you back. And so you just launch into achieving your dreams. Then the next question is another interesting one. How have you been able to handle constructive criticism, either from a boss, colleagues, and friends? <laughs> I laugh at that because it says constructive criticism. <laughs> um, yeah, constructive criticism is even easier to deal with 
sometimes it's just criticism especially those that you don't feel are fair or valid whether it's from a boss colleagues friends or even members of the family yeah i think feedback is a gift i i take feedback as a gift and wherever i go i tell people that feedback is a gift you should approach it as something that helps you get better in fact i think you should go out and seek feedback you should pursue it and get it because that's the way you will get better and so in my career in my life i've received a lot of feedback but just as gifts when you receive feedback don't be defensive take it for what it is then in your own space subject it to analysis i call that the relevance analysis and then you determine the relevance quotient of the criticism if the relevance is high then it's constructive so the higher it is the more constructive it is but there are some gifts you receive that are downright useless you don't use them so you either think of somebody to give it to or you just leave it or whatever you do with it so the same with feedback when you subject it to analysis choose the ones that are constructive that will help you progress but you have to be objective, that's the thing. Don't be defensive about it. Be humble, don't let your ego get the better of you. And then use that feedback to get yourself better, or if it's a service that you're offering, get the service better. And so giving an example, you'll be shocked to know that sometime in my career, a boss that I had referred to me as a waste of space. And it was funny because I knew I was not a waste of space. I actually was very confident about what I had, my strengths, and what I had invested in my career to get where I was. Come on, I made a first class for crying out loud. I then found out that the problem was that she was very different from me. There was also racism involved and all that. And as the president of the Shell African Network, a number of members of the network also received funny feedback. There was one that was crying and she came to me. And her boss had given her feedback that people that looked like her would never make it to the executive committee. What did she look like? She looked like me and she had very nice dreads. And so that was the feedback that her boss gave her and it broke her. So but by the time we had a chat and said, mm -mm, you know, this doesn't work. We actually spoke to HR about it because the person needed more training. You don't allow managers ruin your very good stuff. This, the, the lady in question was a first class brain. She delivered above expectations and her boss said to her, people like you, people that look like you would never make it to the executive committee. So you meet all those in your journey, but awareness of self, a very clear vision of where you're going would help you no matter what anybody said. You're aligned to your vision, you're aligned to your values, your strengths, your passion. You know where you're going, you know what you need to go there. You have the tools you require. You do your question thinking, your systems thinking, then you'll be able to do your relevance analysis and decide what you're going to do with feedback. So when I got that feedback, instead of it destroying me, it actually motivated me to find ways to get some more visibility and get some more constructive feedback outside my boss because I then realized that she wasn't giving me objective feedback for her own subjective reasons uh, but it, it really helped in fact that was the period I then established the Shell Africa Network it was about the same time that I got that feedback so really constructive criticism is good but it's also good to know yourself so that when you get criticism that is not constructive it doesn't have a negative impact on you. You still continue going on the journey you're going to. All right, so the next one is, how have you been able to manage work and family successfully? Ah, that's one that I get quite often. Well, I'll start first by saying that we have to be very clear what our deeply held values are. So as a person, what drives you? What is important to you? So for me, family and friends, very important. Relationships are very important to me. Spirituality is very important to me. Growth, excellence, those are some of my top values. And then in living a life that is fulfilling, in living fully, you need to make sure that your time 
is aligned to what is important to you. And you ask yourself the right questions so that you get creative ways to then make sure that you're living a life that is aligned to your values. So for instance, I remember when I went for, well, what the, I, it ended up being the in, an interview for my job in Seplat, and at the end of it, after the conversation, I then said, um, you know, I will deliver, but I've got young kids. If the nurse or the teacher from school calls me about any of my children, I will drop everything I'm doing and I will go. However, I will still deliver. I'm a results-driven leader. And so if that is a problem for you, please let me know. And I said that because my top held values are the values that if they are breached, I will walk away. I, there's no conversation about it. There's nothing. I'm not going to compromise on these. And even when I was younger, when I was in Shell, my children were very young and I asked to work from home on a Monday and a Friday. I was told, well, it might affect my progress. And I'm like, fine, I can always work on my career later. But you see, this childhood of my children, they would never have it again. I can never recreate it. But a, a career, I can always work on it and create it again. And so for me, that value is very deep for me. And I, did, I never wanted to compromise it. So I made the time. All right, we work. Yes, I also had to be excellent at work. So I had to be creative and find ways of working smarter, working more efficiently, and still managing to make sure that the children knew that nothing was more important than they were in my life. Because that was what was going to give them that security, knowing that mommy is always there, mommy puts them first. Also, something like spirituality, that was very important to me. I had to build it into my life and optimize it. And so I had to get a spirituality where my life itself was prayer. I had to bring out time. I'm Catholic to go for mass during, during lunchtime to, to get my sanity back. That was my cave to go and recharge my batteries. But then the attitude that you bring to work should be one of prayer. So when you're dealing with um, individuals that are in your sphere of influence, remember that you are another Christ, for instance. And then bringing out five minutes here, 10 minutes here, to kind of just go within yourself in quiet and do a bit of meditation different times during the day. So I didn't have to go off to a monastery to be able to practice my spirituality. I didn't have to kind of wear my spirituality on my sleeves. What instead would be people would say, okay, why is she like that? Why is she very joyful? Why is she a people person? And then somebody might say, oh yeah, I think it's her spirituality. So in that way, I aligned my values with my time and my passions. And somehow they've worked. And my kids are grown now, they're teenagers, but we're still very close and do things together. So these, these questions have been quite interesting and I hope I've been able to give a bit of a picture of what a winning mindset is. But before we close, I'd just like to say, well, one, there's something that people re usually refer to as conventional wisdom. Please question conventional wisdom. Don't just accept it. The second thing is observe yourself objectively. And we all have our automatic pilots, our automatic beliefs. We've lived with these automatic thoughts and beliefs and pilots all our lives. So it's automatic because you're not even aware that that is what is driving your life. But these are some of the things that might be limiting you, that might be in, getting in the way of you achieving your objectives or your goals. And you're there wondering why it is that you're going round and round and not achieving what you're, going to, you're supposed to achieve. So just obje observe yourself objectively. Ask yourself open-ended questions. Things like, what's behind this? What am I assuming? What are the facts here? What are my responsibilities? What are other possibilities? What do they want? What do I want? What's driving this? What's making this important? Ask yourself those questions to find out the way you're thinking and what's in your mindset. If, you're, if you find your, you jump to assumptions quite a lot, just become aware of it. Don't judge yourself. I think the awareness is like switching on the light. It's like an aha moment. And then 
Another thing is conformational intelligence. We all tend to go with what the crowd is saying and tend to question anybody that dares to think otherwise, dares to question what you thought was natural law or gospel truth. Listen. We've got two ears, one mouth. Let's use them in accordance. So listen more, hear what people are saying, find out where they are coming from, realize that there are different perspectives to any situation, any circumstance. Be less of a judge. I'm not saying judging as in good or bad, but just judging things as in acceptable, not be open-minded. Remember that to win, you have to have a mindset that wins. You have to have a mindset that's open, you have to have a mindset that questions. You have to have a mindset that wants to learn. And so with that, you will find your life will change and you will now find that you're better able to achieve your goals. And so I wish you a winning mindset and I hope to hear more from you on how you're winning. And also, please feel free to send your questions. As you can see, I will deal with all those questions. So thank you very much. Bye. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to continue seeing content like this. Till next time, keep your questions rolling in and don't forget to use your winning mindset.